In this video, we'll show how to analyze Barracuda results using TechPlot, PyTechPlot, and a Jupyter Notebook. And our goal here will be to calculate the residence time distribution curve of particles within a simulation. Uh, the example we'll be using here is the pre-setup cyclone from the Barracuda training directory. And I've already run it out to about 2.5 seconds. And one thing to be aware of is that in this setup, uh, we already had this in the preset of example, but if you want to look at residence time distributions specifically using this method, you do need to have the residence time variable selected under your particle data for visualization data output. And when you have this, all of your tech plot files will contain residence time information, and then you can do this type of analysis. Uh, let's look at the tech plot results visually first so we can see what we're looking at. If we click View Results, uh, this will open the TechPlot window with the default view, which is particles colored by volume fraction. Uh, so let's switch over to residence time. In our quick macro panel, we can double click the item for particles colored by residence time. I'll go ahead and make this window a little bigger. And when we look at this, what we'll see is that the blue particles are new to the system. These are the ones coming in from the feed, so they have low residence time whereas the red particles have been in the system for a longer time, right? So they have higher residence time values up to 2.5 seconds, since that's the point I've run this to so far. Uh, there are also particles leaving the system here. So if we change our zone style for the scatter, we can go from a point to a sphere, and then we can make those spheres a little bit bigger. And what we'll see is the particles that are leaving the vortex tube and exiting the pressure we see up here, are usually one second or higher in residence time. And so there will be an uneven distribution of residence times in the system. We'll have more new particles and fewer old particles. Uh, so here, let's go ahead and quantify this using the script that we're interested in. I'll go ahead and change those to points just so it's a little bit more responsive again. Um, in order to use a script, you do have to enable PyTechPlot connections. So if you go to scripting, PyTech plot connections, make sure you check this box for accept connections. And so now this tech plot GUI will be listening for a script to connect to it. Uh, so let's go back to the Barracuda GUI. Uh, you'll click the terminal button here. And what this will do is it'll open a terminal in your current project directory. And you'll know that it's configured correctly if you see parentheses base over on the left. And what this means is that Anaconda Python is installed and configured according to our recommended procedure. Uh, so if you haven't done that yet, please look at the bottom of this support site post. I'll put a link there that points you to the correct installation instructions so that everything is set up properly. Assuming that you have this, you'll have a command available to you called Jupyter-Notebook. So if you go ahead and type that, this will start a Jupyter Notebook session in this directory, and it will open either a web browser or a new tab in your web browser. And what you should see as this starts up is the, the default view is kind of like a file browser within your current directory. And I've created an IPython notebook or a Jupyter notebook script already, and this is also downloadable from this support site post. So go ahead and grab that. And once this is in your directory, you can click on the name of the script, and it will open it in the Jupyter Notebook Editor. Um, once you're here, the Jupyter Notebook Editor has code that it divides into cells. And so we can run one cell at a time, or we can run all the cells. Um, so just, just in case you've never used this before, um, this is kind of a common pattern that we use for Jupyter Notebooks. The first cell we often do for importing libraries that we need to use. Um, the second cell I'm using here for connecting to the tech plot session and reading my residence time variables. This, this is really the important line in this cell, is that I'm looking at my particle zone, I'm getting the variable named residence time, and I'm saving that as a NumPy array that I can work with further in the next cell. So that's kind of the important thing about this cell. The final cell calculates a histogram using a NumPy library called histogram. And then we're going to plot that histogram curve using a matplotlib um, 
chunk of code here. Uh, so here, let's go ahead and run this whole notebook. Uh, you can either click in each cell and click the Run button, or you can click in a cell and hit Control Enter at the same time, and that will run it. Or you can go to Kernel, uh, Restart, and Run All. This will run the entire notebook all at once. So there's a few different ways that you can interact with it, depending on what you need to be doing. But here you'll see as it's running, it tells us that it connected to TechPlot using this port, so it connected to the TechPlot GUI that we have open. Um, I just had it output a few little pieces of information so that we, we know that we're on the right time step. We have an idea of how many particles we're analyzing, what's the minimum residence time, what's the maximum residence time, just, just for kind of sanity checks to make sure that we've got the right data. And then the final cell outputs this plot of residence time distribution. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, once the particles reach about one second in the system, then they start to exit. And so that's what we're seeing here. We have fewer particles as we get to higher residence times, um, whereas below one second, the residence time distribution is quite flat, right? Particles really don't start leaving until about that one second time. So that's what this plot is showing us. Um, one other thing worth noting is that sometimes it is useful to put a plot like this in a presentation or a document. So if you use this kind of line to save the figure, it will create a PNG file in your directory uh, where you're running the Python notebook. And so here, if we double click on this, it should just open it in an image viewer. Um, but that's, that's sometimes handy to know about as well, just in case you need to share that plot with anyone. So, uh, that covers the concepts. Uh, basically, you open a TechPlot GUI, you open a terminal, you start the Jupyter Notebook, connect to the GUI that's running, and then you can access the variables that are available in your data. Um, and one nice thing about this, just in case you've previously used GMB to text or plot to text, you have to convert those files and save them in your directory as large text files. Uh, by using this method, you completely avoid the conversion step. So there's, there's no need to create those text files, right? You are directly accessing the data directly in the uh, tech plot session. So that's kind of the really uh, cool thing about this is that you can avoid that conversion step and you don't have to take up so much time or uh, hard drive space for doing that. And then you can get to this sort of information uh, to give you some nice engineering uh, insight into your simulation. So that concludes this video.